Welcome to the Merrill Collection of Science Fiction, Speculation, and Fantasy. The Merrill Collection is a research collection of science fiction and fantasy and horror, and it's meant for researchers. We have over 75,000 items, and many of them in different forms. One of the forms we hold is fantasy role-playing games. When you are playing a fantasy role-playing game, your referee will have designed a story for you, and the players will all have designed an imaginary character, and you will play out the referee's story as that imaginary character. The game can take anywhere from three to six or seven hours, and it's a totally inv involving experience. It is descended from the old strategy and tactics games, where people would play out historic battles and then pretend that the generals knew something they didn't know and improved on the original battle. Whereas with fantasy role-playing games, you can make up anything you want as long as you're internally consistent, which is always the rule for fantasy. We have a great many fantasy role-playing games. Some of them are based on fiction, fiction by H.P. Lovecraft. Some of them are based on movies, Star Wars. Some of them are just based on ideas. Everyone loves westerns. And when you combine fantasy and westerns, you get a very interesting synthesis. The original and still most popular game was Dungeons and Dragons, which became popular in North America in 1974. Since then, Son of Dungeon and Dragon and Spawn of Dungeon and Dragon has created thousands of other fantasy role-playing games. My name is Leslie McGrath, and I'm the senior department head of the Osborne Collection of Early Children's Books. This is a research and reference collection of early and modern notable books that ranges from a 14th century manuscript of Aesop's fables on animal skin, right up through medieval books of manners, horn books, chat books, school books, Victorian classics, right up to modern times. Small readers have always loved small books. Our collection of miniature books ranges back from the 18th century. You see here we've got some of Borman's gigantic histories, they were called. And these are lovely little instructional books about the history of London. But we also have miniature thumb Bibles, and we've got a miniature Koran here. We have as well small libraries dating from 1800. This is the bookcase of instruction. And here's a beautiful collection of early French fairy tales. This book, called The Might, is from Queen Mary's Dollhouse and it's a book of great striding thoughts by important people of the day. We've also got a full set of these air raid shelter books that were used to distract children during the London Blitz. You can see they fit easily into a pocket and were bright and colorful. We have as well small miniature novelties like these peep shows and here I've brought you a Canadian classic to enjoy. This is Anne of Green Gables. These are hand-colored illustrations that you see throughout. Here's Anne. If you enjoyed this sample of miniature books shown at the TD Gallery, please come and join us at Osborne where you can enjoy the full collection, including the world's smallest book. Hello, I'm Stephen Schubert. I'm a librarian here at the Toronto Reference Library in the Special Collections Department. The word incunabula comes from the Latin word for cradle, and this is used to refer to the earliest European printed books from the 15th century. This was new technology, so as it were, it was in the cradle. And I'm representing the Toronto Reference Library's Special Collections for the Arts, and these early books are part of the private press and fine printing collection, which documents the history of the book and the history of book production from the 15th century up until the present day. Printing was developed first in Germany, but it very quickly spread throughout Europe. And the example that I have to show you today was printed in 1498 from Venice. And the printers were the Gregori brothers, whose names were Giovanni and Gregorio. And the actual book is a collection of the works of St. Jerome, who was credited with translating the Bible into Latin. And it starts out with a vita or life of Jerome, and then continues with his various commentaries on different books of the Bible, such as Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. And the one we can see here is his commentary on the Psalms. If you look closely, the first letter has a drawing around it, and that represents a monk writing with a quill pen. This probably represents Jerome either writing this book or translating the Bible. And then around it, you can see there's a very elaborate border 
full of classical motifs. Up at the top, for example, there's a satyr, and down the side, these are floral ornaments, very much like Pompeian wall painting. So together, these two elements represent the two main types of books that were being published in the 15th century, the uh, classical Greek and Roman authors and the works for the Christian church. And this border we know was used by the printers on several other books, including one published in 1494 on the works of the Greek historian Herodotus. Hello and welcome to the Arthur Conan Doyle Room. We're on the fifth floor of the Toronto Reference Library in the Marilyn and Charles Bailey Special Collections Centre. My name is Peggy Perdue and I'm the curator of the Arthur Conan Doyle Collection. Did you know that Toronto is one of the best places in the world to learn about Sherlock Holmes and his creator? The items you'll see in the A to Z exhibition are just a small sample of what we have. We also have first editions, such as this English first of the Hound of the Baskervilles, manuscript items, such as this letter from Conan Doyle to his editor from the Strand Magazine, magazines, newsletters, and journals, such as Canadian Homes, the journal of the bootmakers of Toronto, Toronto's own Sherlock Holmes Club. We have books about film and television adaptations of the stories, such as this uh, one about uh, the BBC Sherlock series. There are many Sherlock Holmes stories by Arthur Conan Doyle, as well as thousands by other writers. So if you've seen the exhibition, why not come up to the fifth floor and investigate the Arthur Conan Doyle room? Hello, I'm Jessie, the current curator of the Library's Performing Arts Collection, part of the Special Collections in the Arts. It features periodicals, printed music, manuscripts, printed ephemera, engravings, and stage designs. The stage design collection is the largest of its kind in any Canadian public library, with more than 4,500 both costume and set for theatre, dance, musical theatre, and opera companies in festival and regional theatres across Canada set and costume drawings, designs for film and television productions, and works by award-winning designers. In the stage design collection, we have numerous opera designs. Um, here we have some set designs for Bluebeard's Castle, an opera originally composed by Bella Bartók and produced in Budapest, Hungary in 1918. This set design was created by Murray Laufer for the Canadian Opera Company in 1974. Laufer grew up in Toronto, studying drawing and painting at the Ontario College of Art. He has had a long career designing for Canadian theatres, such as the Toronto Crest Theatre, the Canadian Opera Company, and Stratford Festival Theatre. His set designs for this production are among his most notable. We also have numerous costume designs for the same production by Marie Day, who has worked collaboratively with Laufer on many productions. Day was also born and raised in Toronto and studied painting and drawing at the Ontario College of Art. She has had a successful career working for many Canadian theatres such as the Canadian Opera Company and the Stratford Festival and has won awards for her costume and stage designs. The designs featured here are of Bluebeard himself and the ghosts of some of his past wives. Hello, my name is Alan Walker. I'm a librarian in the Special Collections Centre of the Toronto Reference Library, and I work with the Canadian Historical Picture Collection. The Toronto Public Library's Documentary Art Collection is part of the Baldwin Collections of Canadiana, just one of the special collections in the Toronto Public Library system. The Toronto Public Library has been collecting artwork and photographs since the 1890s, seven years after it was established. The Documentary Art Collection was founded with the donation by John Ross Robertson of a historical picture collection, which contains many of the most notable landscape views in our collection.